Yes, sir. See if it's pulling up. Yeah. Hairline through. Hmm? Send my hairline through. Shit. At least you got one. Okay. Send it out to the bro, see if anybody want to join in. Shalom, Shalom, Jim and Sherry, it's our us. Shalom, daughter of Yahweh. Shalom. Smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> Share it, whatever. Yeah, man. Most high round and third on this king. What's up? For the most highest round and third on this kingdom about to take us oh. home. Oh yeah, it's, 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 I mean, it's, it's doubles and straights. Yes, sir. Straights, brother. Oh shit, we, okay. We on. Hey man, first off, we want to say, call halal, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, 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 want to send double honors to the apostles and elders of the uh, Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to Yaki, I'm out there, pushing words to Syrian truth. I'm Brother Ariala, I'm here with the elder Yashawamba. And uh, we wanted to talk about the higher order that's being established through Yahweh Shah, a higher order. And, that, and that's really going into the order of Melchizedek, the transition of us coming back into the kingly priesthood nationhood. You right. know, king, priest, nation that the Most High always intended when he mm -hmm. first had the uh, earth created and set us upon it. You know, he intended us to be kings and priests. Right. To rule and dominate in righteousness. And through Yahweh Shah, Access to that holy order has been reinvigorated, or we have a we have the opportunity to chase that again. Mm -hmm. So we want to uh, go through some scriptures, talk about that because I think it's something. You know, I was talking to a Christian. You know, this is like last week, and we was talking about Melchizedek, and he was reading the scriptures that I was sending to him, and he ended up going home and reading Jeremiah thirty one, and he was just like, "Man, bro," he was just like, "Why don't they talk about this in church?" Right. You no, know, because when you really, really take a look at the order of Melchizedek, it identifies the purpose that Yahweh Shai died for and what is set to come in the kingdom of heaven, what the Most High truly intends. Right. You know, hence for the nation of Israel to rule. So do you have because any? Two, hey, well, those, the, hey uh, there's two covenants. You know, mm -hmm. the first covenant was broken. Of course, we know that that first covenant was the law, statutes and commandments, you know, written on stone. And the Lord entered into a covenant, a marriage with the nation of Israel, man. And the high priest of that order was who? Aaron, all right? And the sons of Aaron, yep. okay? That was our way back to the heavenly father, okay? They would sacrifice the, the goats. Even, even on the day of atonement, they would have to sacrifice for themselves. So as we are speaking of a new covenant, you have to ask yourself, who's the high priest? Yes, you know, because there's a lot of people in Israel who say, "Well, the most, we're going to go straight to the Most High." Well, you're not going to get straight to the Most High. There's a high priest, and there always was a high priest. Okay, and the priesthood of Aaron is done away with. Okay, we broke that covenant, so there's a new covenant coming, and that's what ultimately we're going to get into to show you that the Messiah, who is Melchizedek, is that high priest, man. Okay, and all the way back to the Father, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And well, it's interesting that Melchizedek is only mentioned twice in the Old Testament, but when you look at the weight he holds, man, it's it's heavy, man. So Lord will, you know, we can get into it. I'll just follow this brother and Lord willing, y'all can be edified, you know. God, yeah, man. It's it's like like you said, it's very interesting that he's only mentioned a few times throughout the scriptures and his backstory isn't really gone into because this is definitely something that was understood via oral tradition. And uh, the focus really is on the Levitical priesthood up until the time of this transition, but this transition was always prophesied. Right. And I think the Most High definitely intended this to be something based on faith and a relationship with him to receive it and understand it through the spirit. And so Lord willing, you brothers and sisters are edified, y'all able to receive this lesson. And uh, I wanted to start 
in Matthew, the 27th chapter, when Yahweh died, and just look at what was said to him. And of course, Yahshua Wamba, if you have any points that you want to make, please feel free to uh, add them in there. Okay, I can uh, read you. Okay, kind. Matthew 27 and 50. All right, so this is uh, Matthew 27 and 50. It says, Yahweh Shai, 27, Yahweh Shai, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. So when he's on the cross, it says, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent and twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Boom. So basically, when we're looking at this, we're seeing that the veil of the temple, which represents the, what the, the holies of holies, that's the place that the high priest would go into mm -hmm. to make supplication with the Most High. Mm -hmm. So you have Aaron and the rest of the Levitical priesthood will go inside the veil of the temple, and that's where they would commit sacrifices and do those things necessary that kept the nation of Israel in good standing with Yahweh. That's right. So that veil, when Yahweh was, uh, was rent, and uh, spiritually that represented a, a changing of the order, a changing of access to the Heavenly Father. No, it wasn't going to be through um, uh, the sacrifices of the, of the Levites because the Most High basically divorced the nation of Israel when you read Jeremiah uh, 3. Matter of fact, you want to grab it real quick? Yeah, I can get it. Jeremiah chapter 3, we can start at verse 6. You going to pull it up over here? Yes, sir, I'll pull it up. Yeah. And also that um that veil, the, the 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 priest would go into that veil, the holy of holies, and they would commune directly with the most high through his word. That's and right. when they commune with the most high through his word, which is Yahweh Shah, we know, they would go and then tell the nation of Israel what the Heavenly Father required and what he wanted. Okay. So now that 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 uh, uh Levitical priesthood, the sons of Aaron, is done away with, how do we commune? All right, with the heavenly father, man. Okay, it's through the order of Melchizedek, it's through Yahweh Shai. But uh, Jeremiah 3 and 6, yes, sir. And just read now through uh, through 8. Yep, Jeremiah 3 and 6. Yahweh had also said unto me in the days of Josiah the king, How that, how, how hast thou seen that which back, uh, that which backsliding Israel have done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree and have played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me and she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Mm. And I saw it when all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Right. And so what happens when you get get a bill of divorce? When a, when a woman, which the nation of Israel was married unto the Heavenly Father through that first covenant, when a woman receives a bill of divorce, she loses the name. You know, she loses that name and, and, and the rights that come along with that name. And we always have to understand that's the true importance of the name. It's not just the name itself. It's everything that's coupled with it, everything that comes along with it. That's why the name of the Heavenly Father is important. That's why uh, recognizing that we're the nation of Israel and coming into the word is important because the glory and the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha is tied to that. Mm -hmm. It's tied to that. So this bill of divorce is extremely important to understand. Okay. Right. So you, right. Right. Access, mm -hmm. you can say something. No, nah, because we broke that covenant. When you read uh, Ezekiel, uh, uh, Exodus 24, Moses sprinkled the blood upon Israel and they agreed. They said, we will do all that you require. You know what I'm saying? So they entered into a, a, a marriage with the most high. Okay. But who was there to marry them to the most high? You had the priest. That's why a uh, lawyer, Levi means joined unto me. The Israelites were joined unto the heavenly father via that covenant. Okay. Which was presented to them through Moses and Aaron and his sons, man. But That's we broke right. that covenant, you know? That's right. That's right. And so that bill of divorce uh, basically eliminated us from, from really having real access to the power and glory of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. From that point forward, we were susceptible to be taken down a lot easier. And, you know, the prophets, you know, it, it wasn't a flowing relationship. It was one of them, 
it was one of them tacky relationships. You know how you have a tacky relationship where you good for some time and you ain't good. Right. You, know, you know, there's no trust established. You know, it's just, it's just. Because right. if you think about, if you look at the history of Israel, every time we got in trouble, what did the righteous leader require? He let's clean this temple up. Let's offer up these sacrifices. That yeah. was our way directly back to the Father, man. That's when he heard us. That's when he had mercy on us, you know? But that was broken. <laughs> that was broken. That access was cut off. So what is our way back, you know? All right. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, let's go to Hebrews 6 and 13. I, and this is, we're going to read down all the way to 20. Okay. And, um, and kind of go from there. All right. This is the book of Hebrews chapter. And, and I do see the scriptures that you brothers are posting. They are very good scriptures. We will get to them. We just want to establish the premise and then we'll, we'll, we'll touch on what we need to touch on from there. All right. This is the book of Hebrews chapter six and 13. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. Puts his word above his name. <laughs> Boom. I, that's why I was going to pull that. Yep. Uh, in Psalms 138, it says, surely, saying, surely, blessing will I bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. a promise that he made. The Most High is not going to be slack according to his word, okay? Mm -hmm. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Woo! <laughs> Speaking of Abraham, for men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is, is to them, in the end of all strife. Right. People barely swear by greater and then they come to an agreement. Mm -hmm. All right. That ends the strife or the differences. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. Right. He confirmed it by an oath. Right. Immutability means it can't be altered, it can't be swayed. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, mm -hmm. we might have strong consolate a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Right. So it says by two immutable things. I and mean, what are those two immutable things that we're talking about? We mentioned his word and his name. Right. And they and, and, and you got these Israelites out here. They want to uh, they want to try to make something mute. Either they want to make the name mute, or they want to make the word mute. Mm -hmm. And the Most High is going to mute them. Mm -hmm. This is Psalms one thirty eight and one. It says, "I will praise thee with my whole heart." And that goes back to Deuteronomy the thirtieth chapter. Okay, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I praise unto thee. I will worship towards the thy holy temple. And praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, he, he, he made an oath for the children of Israel to have that connection, right? And so he will never go against his word. Right. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that the name is not important in the law or over the name and all of these things that these people are saying, man. That's just meaning he swore on himself, man. That's right. We know that he is by his word, man. Yep. Okay? He made an oath for his holy name's sake. Right. He, hold, he held himself at the highest accountability. And that's why this uh, talks about how the Lord is faithful. So he put his word that the children, uh, the children of the uh, inheritance, the heirs, the nation of Israel. Right. Will, 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 will come into that promise eventually. But there's a particular way. Right. In order. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because Abraham was, he said, Abraham into his seed, okay? And it said Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in their seed, meaning in the latter days there will be a remnant amongst, because he promised Abraham that his seed would be as the sand of the sea, but we know a remnant out of that will return, man, and be heirs to the promise in these latter days through faith, man. Okay? Right. And you have to also remember, a lot of people forget this, but Abraham was blessed by Melchizedek, and we'll get that later on, but a lot of people like to leave that out. Abraham didn't just go straight to the Most High. He was, <laughs> Melchizedek was there, man. Boom. Matter of fact, we'll get next. Um, 
If you want, you don't mind keep reading that. And, uh, okay. Where was I at? Verse uh, seventeen. Mm -hmm. Well, really, verse eighteen. Oh, verse eighteen. It says that by two immutable things, which was impossible for God to lie, we have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. And I wanted to get that word consolation, if you don't mind. It says that we have a strong consolation. What is that talking about? You know, you was talking about this on one of your other sit downs. Strong's G, 3874. Paraklesis. Paraklesis. Right. Paraklesis. It says a calling near summons it says uh, importation, supplication, entreaty, uh, exhortation, an admonition or uh, encouragement, consolation, comfort, solace, that which affords comfort or refreshment. Mm. Through Yahweh shining sacrifice, we're going to be refreshed. It says, thus of the messianic salvation. All right. Mm -hmm. and, and here you see where it calls it the comforter. Right. The controller. Okay. So we have a strong consolation or a comfort mm -hmm. or ability to say, you know, we're tossed to and fro. Our nation is all messed up. But through Yahweh Shai, we have that opportunity to come back. Mm -hmm. Right. It's this uh, persuasive discourse, the gospel, stirring address. Okay. Um, and that's really the point I want on that. I just wanted to bring that point out. Right. That's right. That's why we're comforted above all of the people of our nation right now, man. Jake is losing it, but we're comforted through the Holy Spirit, man, to know we got a kingdom coming that's and right. the devil is falling, man. You know? Right. Like, um, verse 19 in Hebrews 6, it says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast and which entereth into that within the veil. The entereth into that within the veil. Go ahead. Whether the forerunner is for, uh, it says, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Yahawashai made in high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. <laughs> mm. There you go. So there's this transition of the order that we see established here. And when Yahweh Shai completed his mission, when he came down and he basically showed us how to have a proper relationship with Yahweh on the earth, he was rewarded with the highest office of mediating the promise to the nation of Israel. That's right. Okay. He got, he was given everything Man. and we are coming into that. Okay. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you was about to say something. I Mm -mm, disagreeing. Okay, con, con, con. Um, let's see. Let's go to the uh, comment board. There was one on the comment board I wanted to pull in particular. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Did I miss it? Can't find it. Okay. But okay. go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. Okay, what you got? I, I found it. No, go ahead and read that. I wanted to get Exodus 25 to show, you know, how the Lord would commune with the priest, you know, but go ahead. That's beautiful. Uh, this is Hebrews 3, 1 through 4. He's uh, brother of Dye Garments from Basra, 144 put, Wherefore, for holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Hamashiach Yahweh Consider, think. Right who was faithful to him that appointed him. See, he completed his mission. As also, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Mm -hmm. but this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, right. right? A higher order. And as much as he who have built the house have more honor than the house, for every house is built by some man but he that built all things is the most high. Right. And right. Moses built the tabernacle. Okay. He built the tabernacle. When you uh, read the book of Exodus, the Lord gave him a vision. He showed him uh, uh, basically when he went up to the Mount, the Lord showed Moses and gave him the pattern of the, the cause there's a, you got to understand there's a tabernacle in the heavens. We don't have to go too deep into it, but there's a tabernacle and a high priest in the heavens making intercession for us. So the tabernacle that Moses built and the tabernacle that Solomon built 
the temple was based upon the, the, the tabernacle that was already in the heavens. So as Moses built that tabernacle on the earth, which you just read, basically, Yahawashai is of a higher order because the tabernacle that Bo Moses built was based upon the tabernacle that was in the heavens, man. So who's the high priest in the heavens? Melchizedek, man. Okay. Time, time, time. Yeah, then Exodus, do you want me to pull it up? Uh, Exodus 25 and um, because this is speaking of basically that tabernacle, because within the tabernacle, you had the Ark and the Covenant, Exodus 25. And just start it, just get, just read 21 through 22. Right. Exodus chapter 25, verse 21, it says, And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the Ark, and in the Ark, Thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee, mm -hmm. and there I will meet with thee, and mm -hmm. I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. Now, this is in that tabernacle that Moses built. You see that he will commune with thee via the mercy seat. That's the voice of the Most High God, Yahweh Shai, man. And we'll prove all of that, but he will commune with thee. Go ahead. It says, From between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony mm -hmm. of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. There you go. So this priesthood, man, was how the heavenly seat priest, people don't understand a priest, a priest communes directly with their power, man. Yeah. Okay, you got priest on the left-hand side that commune with Satan. Okay, but on the right-hand side, okay, you have a, a, a priesthood who will commune with the most high through his word to go and tell Israel what was what, man. And the same thing is happening right now, okay? But it's gonna be uh, glorified on an even higher level when we are made kings and priests and reign on the earth, man, okay? But I just wanted to get that because people, a lot of people really don't understand what a priest is, man. A priest is more a, a mediator mm -hmm. between a higher power and the people on the earth, man. So for those of you who are saying there is no mediator, that you're just going straight to the most high, it was never that way for the nation of Israel. But you got it, brother. Right. And so we want to talk about even more honing in on that transition. And even, even Abraham understood that. Right. Before even the Levitical priesthood was established, was established, our forefather Abraham <laughs> understood that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so you have to recognize these things that are written in the scriptures. That's right. And, you know, it was written for our learning, right? So I want to say uh, Genesis chapter 14. Man, I mean, I, I can read 18. Yeah, 18, 19. Yeah. This is the first time Melchizedek is mentioned, all right, in, uh, in the scriptures, right? This is uh, Genesis 14. In 18, now we know Abraham was the father of the promise, <laughs> but it's dope that he was blessed by Melchizedek. It says, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, king of peace, king of Jerusalem. <laughs> you see that? Salem mm -hmm. is Jerusalem, basically. Mm -hmm. Brought forth bread and wine, just like the high priest did. And, and he was the priest of the most high God. See that? <laughs> that's and it's and it so and it, and, it, and it says so much in just two sentences <laughs> so the most high god has a priest you got to talk about that man mm -hmm. it cuts all of you all of you torah only who deny the existence of the messiah this cuts you yeah because you the most high the most is just the most high no the, the most high has an order man that's so right in melchizedek which means king of righteousness, Malak Tazadak, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the most high God. And he blessed him, he blessed Abraham, and said, blessed be Abram, or before his name was changed, Boom. most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Boom. So we're seeing that this, uh, that, Abraham knew to pay tithes. He knew he knew what was uh what was going down. He understood that there was a higher order, and that he had to come up underneath it mm -hmm. to be blessed with Yahweh right. and Yahweh and and Abram was in good standing. That's why he had his name changed. All right, right. father of a multitude and everything like that. Okay, when he was uncircumcised too, man. Mm -hmm. 
this show, this is before Levi was even born. This was before the Levitical priesthood was even established, showing you that there was already a priesthood in the order. That's right. See? That's right. And so now that's what we want to touch on next. Because this is why you, uh, this is how we understand that Yahweh Shai came and that there was an extreme importance to his sacrifice and why he was here prophetically. There was always this mention of a person that will come and establish his holy order. That's right. Okay. That's right. So uh, Hebrews 5. Let me start at one or two. Yeah, probably I started at one. Oh man, this is a heavy chapter. Hebrews 5 and 1. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant, the role of the high priest, mm -hmm. and for them that are out of the way, for that he himself is also compassed with infirmity. Right. You know, those high priests under that first order, they also, they also sinned, you know. They also had to, to offer up, you know, it says, and by reason hereof, he ought as for the people so also for himself to offer sins. <laughs> mm -hmm. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. As was Aaron. Mm -hmm. so, so that blessing went on to the children of, of Levi. Mm -hmm. And Aaron is, is like the chief representative of that that Levitical order, right, okay. right, the light bringer. That's right. That's right. That's what it, says. it says. Um, so the true light is the wisdom of righteousness, man. The law, statutes, and commandments. It says, um, and so also Hamashiach glorified not himself to be made in high priest, but he said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the most highest decision. He's the one who did it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Cause he was, he birthed them in the heavens. You know, he's the wisdom of the most high God, man. Okay. It says, um, as he said also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Malak Tazadak, Melchizedek. Mm. And that's what we forgot to talk about that word Malak Tazadak. You know, right. Malak meaning king and Tazadak meaning righteousness. Right. King of righteousness. Okay. Right. And so we all know that words mean things. Mm -hmm. And so now we see Yahweh Shah coming into that order. Right. You know? Right, right. Being established with power, dominion, being a king. Mm -hmm. All right. And then also administering the righteousness of the Heavenly Father or the understanding of the righteousness of the Heavenly Father. Right. With, what the priests do. That's right, brother. That's right. We keep reading. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse uh, six, it says, also said he in another place, which is Psalms uh, 110, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, mm. heard and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. In being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto them that obey him. Mm. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Boom. So what that, that's coming into the rights of being able to have access. To, to that ark, being able to sit amongst the mercy seat, get the testimony of the uh, of the Most High, and commune with the Most High, and then do what? Bring it to the people. Yep. That's that's what Yahweh Shai has done. That's right. And that's why he said I was going to send forth a comforter. Mm -hmm. Basically, that testimony, that understanding, that spirit, that way. Mm -hmm. He's communing with us. That's right. That's right. He's on the right hand side of the heavenly father and he's sending down gifts, man, in the form of the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, so that we can build the church, man. That's in the book of, I believe, uh, Ephesians, man. It goes into that. Is that, what is that, Ephesians 3? Ephesians 4. 4. Ephesians 4. You know, because now that we no longer have a temple on earth, 
and we no longer have the Levitical priesthood, what is our way back to the Father? How are we now able to commune with the Father, all right, uh, uh, um, so that we can tell Israel what to do? Well, it's through Yahawashai, who's in the heavens, man. That's right. That's a better deal than having a high priest, all right, uh, uh, on the earth, who's in pack with infirmities and all of that, you see? It's a higher order, man. That's right. A higher priesthood, and this is the priesthood which is gonna lead us to being kings and priests into everlasting life. The sacrifices under that first covenant did not lead to everlasting life. And we know that there's a second covenant, okay? Yep. So there has to be a high priest of that second covenant. That's right. Okay? Right. And we're reading about him. Want me to keep reading? Mm-hmm. Where we at? Uh, verse 11. Verse 11. I started at 10 and said, God called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek of whom we, we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing you're a dull of hearing because this is deep, this is heavy, you know. I'll mm -hmm. say this real quick, man. It took me, I mean, over the last five, I've been in the truth, what, 13 years? This just clicked with me, this priesthood and all of that over the last probably five to six years, man. So this is uh, this takes some toiling. The spirit, man, because mm -hmm. so, uh, it gives you a higher sense of what you've been called into. Mm -hmm. You really, and that, and that's because it does take a little time for you to take ownership of your role within the ministry. You know what I mean? To where you, you know, and you're confident about your role within this truth. We spend a lot of time trying to find ourselves, even though you might be working within the camps and you're doing your daily duties. You, but it, it takes a little maturity in the spirit to say, okay. This is my role within the body. This is the higher order that's being established, and this is how I'm gonna help bring it forward. You it's, know a gift. it's a gift. <laughs> it's that's a gift right. that you bring to the body, but where does the gift come from? You know? That's right. That's right. So even, even back in this time, they were struggling with the understanding of you know, the purpose of Yahweh Shah, his role in the priesthood. People were still in looking, they were still looking for. The Levites to do all of these things, and they wasn't understanding that that higher order was already established once Yahweh Shai, you right. know, died on the cross. Right. Well, this book here was written because at this time, a lot of uh, our people, once Yahweh Shai sent it back, they got depressed, man. And they said, well, damn, we thought this was the end. So they started to go back to that Levitical priesthood as the establishing that as the way of righteousness. And this letter is exhorting them. Look how important the Yahweh Shai is, bro. Look what he did for us, bro. Mm -hmm. If you still stuck on that first covenant and talking about Moses and Aaron, which those are beautiful things, but they were only a sign of what was to come. Mm -hmm. Only a sign, man. That wasn't the end all be all of the priesthood, man. That was just a sign of something that was already established, man. That's right. That's right. All right. It says... Hebrews 5 and 12, for when, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of the Most High, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. Mm -hmm. That's why Melchizedek was mentioned at the top, because basically when you understand that, that's, you start to understand the first principles of the oracles of the Heavenly Father, that there was a way that was always written. And this is why Adam knew the way. All right. This is why Seth knew the way. This is why all these men of the Lord knew the way before even the Levitical priesthood was established. Yep. Abel, uh, Abel had more a more righteous sacrifice. Yep. See that? Yep. That shows you that Adam passed the priesthood down. That's right. See, Noah offered up a righteous sacrifice, and that's what made the Lord say, I'm not going to flood the earth no more. So, so there was always that sacrifice in that priesthood, man. But that was first on the earth breathed into Adam, okay, who was the first priest basically on earth, so to say. But there were, you know. That's right. That's right. All right. Want me to keep going? Yes, sir. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of right righteousness, for he is the babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to uh, discern both good and evil. Mm -hmm. And that takes what? That takes time and consistency. Going through the word, preaching the word, confessing the word, and the most I will sup with you and, and increase your understanding 
right. over the dispensation of time. And I talked about that a little bit when you was talking about, you know, when you first came into the truth, how basically, um, you know, you didn't, I was like, man, you like, I, I didn't understand completely the order of Melchizedek till after a few years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. right. And then it can't, it got deeper over the years, man. It, 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 it's, once you understand this, man, it's like, okay, okay, you know, it's, it's easier to navigate as it just read. We just read that in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, man. That's right. This has to be understood, man, because a lot of people are just talking, but they really don't understand these things, man. All right. Yes, sir. Next. Hebrews 7, and nope. this, just to kind of lock in that mindset that we was talking about, how that the oracles of the Heavenly Father, that mindset, that understanding was always there. Mm -hmm. So I just want to highlight that with the top of Hebrews 7. Yep. Hebrews 7 and 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who, and it's, it's crazy, man, that Jerusalem was always where, the, that's where everything was established, man. Yeah. But yeah. Melchizedek was already king of Salem, which is basically <laughs> Jerusalem. Yep. I believe in Psalms, it says, uh, I forget. It, it it basically lets you know that that place that's that's Jerusalem, man. But he was already king of Jerusalem. <laughs> All right, for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, mm -hmm. who met Abram returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, and to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being in first being by interpretation king of righteousness, after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Boom, there it is, they broke it down. That's After right. also king of Salem, which is king of peace. That's, that's right. Where, that's where you get the word uh, Jerusalem. That's right, it comes from, and that's where peace is gonna be established from in the earth once everything is, you know, uh, Jerusalem will be the headquarters. That's right, that's right. And it's funny because, you know, you look up Salem and I just kind of looked it up in the search engine. It's not mentioned like a whole bunch either, you know what I mean? <laughs> Mm -mm. So well, uh, Psalm 76 and 2 says, In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the tabernacle was always set up in Jerusalem. When David ruled, you know, he had to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. Solomon mm -hmm. built the temple in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where Isaac was getting ready to be sacrificed by his father Abraham. But that's a whole nother topic. But that's where the temple was built in Jerusalem. So he's the king of Salem, you know? That's right, that's right. And uh, it says, when you look up that word Salem, um, it links up to the word Strong's H8004, uh, uh, Shalom. There you go. Peace. It says the place where Melchizedek was king and thought to be the ancient name of Jerusalem. Mm. It is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, so we can go back. All right. It says, um, Hebrews 7 and 3, without father, without mother. Why? Because he was born of the Most High God, man. He's the son of the Most High God. <laughs> without I mean, father. Do you want to touch in on this? What's that? Like what, you was, what we were talking about before we had started. I think that's a good, this is a good place if you wanted to touch in on how, basically, when we look at Melchizedek, there's that there's that holy order in the heavens, like waiting. You know, I think that links with what uh, Revelation five or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's so much. It's, I mean, that, yeah, yeah, it could it could it could go into. <laughs> yeah, it can, it can really go there. Well, I mean, we can get it. We can get it. Okay. Well, let's finish this up real quick. Okay. Okay. It's so much, man. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very vast top. It's crazy how his name is only mentioned twice in the Old Testament. But as you get the book of Hebrews and you start to talk about it, man, it can really go for hours, man. Yeah. But um, it says, um, now consider Hebrews 7 and 4. Now consider how great this man was to whom even <laughs> the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils, man. Consider. 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 How great this man was, okay? Consider, mm -hmm. think about it, mm -hmm. okay? And verily, where we at? And verily, they that are the sons of Levi who received the office of the priesthood 
have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is of their brethren, that they uh, come out of the loin, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Mm -hmm. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. Mm. Mm. So his descent was not counted uh, um, from them, like me meaning he came before the Levites, but he was still received the tithes and he had the power to bless the person with the promises. That's right. The most high used him to establish his word. Right, right, right. Because we call Abraham the father of the promise, but a lot of people leave out that he was blessed by Melchizedek, man. So who is that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's heavy, man. Who is that? Let's talk about this guy. This, <laughs> you know, we got to talk about it. Not like, you know, it's a lock here. But let's talk about that. We got to talk about that, man. Yeah. All right. It says, and without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the greater because Yahweh, well, Melchizedek is the greater and he blessed Abraham, man. That's how we are blessed. <laughs> Our blessing starts, all right, with Melchizedek, man. It says, where are we at? Verse eight. Verse eight. And here men that die receive tithes, the high priest after the order of Aaron, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth. Mm. And as I say, Levi also who received tithes paid tithes in Abraham for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. So even Levi through Abraham was paying tithes to this higher order. Right, right. Through Abraham. Woo. That's it. The, 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 the Levitical priesthood bowed to Abraham. <laughs> bowed to Melchizedek. Bowed to Melchizedek. Salakia, bowed to Melchizedek. Yeah. Wow. That's heavy. A higher order through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice is being established. Mm -hmm. through the comforter being sit down, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the uh, of the uh the prophecies, the word of the heavenly father, basically waking up the uh uh the lost sheep of the house of Israel, mm -hmm. that order is being proclaimed out in the world. Right. Okay, right. When it reaches where it's supposed to reach, the mm. scripture says that Yahweh Shai will come down because we do, we basically complete the job like Yahweh Shai completed the job, but we have to do our job. And then we will be blessed, even as Yahweh Shai, to be at the forefront of that higher order. Kings and priests. Kings and priests. As the brother GMS Vegas just put, uh, that's why Yahweh Shai said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. What does that mean? How did Abraham see Yahweh Shai. What does that mean? He was blessed by Melchizedek, man. Let's keep reading here, though. That's heavy. If you can, Baba Kasha, post that scripture. Hey, and Shalom, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Bashim, Kaku, Das, Brakat, Das. You want to pull that scripture up? Uh, oh, okay. He posted, he he posted posted it on, on the stream yard. My bad. He just post, you know, once he posted. Oh, there you go. Wait. That brother right there, bro. He be he be going in. Pretty monster. Uh huh. You want me to read it? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. It says John eight fifty six through fifty nine. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Right. And it was Isaac too. Yeah. Yep, that's true. It was Isaac too, because you know that's how the, how the promise was passed down. As the brother uh, Gabriel Yahweh just put, go ahead. It said, "Yahweh uh, said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am." Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Yahweh hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and, and, you know, and he kind of just ended the point there. Right, because those high priests did not want to hear that, man. They were like, hell no. Nah. They did not want to hear that. They did not want to adhere to the authority of Yahweh Shai, man. That's right. You know? But um, let's yeah. go back to Hebrews uh, 7, because I wanted to make a point, too. Um, could you scroll up, Baba Kasha? Yes, sir. To verse 11. Stop at 11. Right there? 
Yep. So Hebrews 7 and 11. If therefore perfection, this is to you, you guys who boast in the Levitical priesthood, if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, okay, what further need was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek, who was priest of the Most High God, and not after the order of Aaron? And that's in the Old Testament. Yep. That's in the Old Testament, man. One of the brothers had pulled it up. What's that? Uh, Psalms. Um, what is it? It's in, I know it's in Psalms. Well, basically, Psalms 110. Yeah, Psalms 110. Oh, pull mm -hmm. that up real quick, and then we'll go back to Hebrews 7. We got to get you Psalms 110. Just pull it up right here. Mm -hmm. You see it? Yeah. <laughs> when my brother died, Garvey, Garvey. I want a little bit more. You want to get the whole oh, thing? You know what? That's, that's cool. Okay. Um, this is Psalms 110 and 4. It says, the Lord, Yahweh, because when you read up, David says, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand. You see that? Who's David's Lord? <laughs> the Lord have sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Now, who's the right hand of the most high God? It's Yahweh Shai, man. Oh, man, who's going to strike through the kings? He's going to strike through the kings, man. David is speaking of Yahweh Shai, man. He's That's speaking right. of Yahweh Shai, man. Point blank, period. In yeah. all, Psalm 72, he says the same thing, but he's, he's speaking of Solomon. But Solomon is Yahweh Shai when you read that chapter in Psalm 72. But anyway. Yeah, because we know Solomon Solomon had a peaceful kingdom. Mm -hmm. You know, there wasn't, you know, he was making pacts and deals and stuff yeah. like that. 40 years of peace. What he did was basically a forerun, uh, forerunner to what Yahweh Shai would come to do. And also Solomon was a king and a priest. That's right. Solomon was a king and a priest because he was anointed, okay, with the uh, oil by uh, Zadok, the uh, high priest. He was anointed with the oil that only the sons of Aaron were to be anointed with. So he was not only a king, but he was a king and a priest. That's right. That's okay. Right. All right. Did you want some more on that? Uh, no, that's, that's the point on that. All right. So. Let's keep reading here in Hebrews 7 real quick, and then we'll move on. Uh. Hebrews 7, and uh, I'll read 11 again. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, and we died under that law, man. We were through under that, 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 that covenant. It says, for under the people received the law, what further need was there for another priest who should, all right, that should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Mm. It says, for the priesthood being changed, Okay, there is made also a necessity of the change in the law, the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. As for he of whom these things are spoken of pertaining to another tribe. Uh oh. Pull up, pull up Genesis 49 real quick. I want to make this point. I want to make this point too. Because the high priest came out of Judah, which was a promise. That Jacob told us, man. This is uh Genesis chapter 9, 49. 49 and 10. I just started at 10. It says, The scepter, okay, shall not depart from Judah, the head tribe, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. You see that? Nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Between his feet, meaning he will be the one that brings the law. Until Shiloh come. <laughs> and that means tranquility peace okay yeah and unto him shall the gathering of the people be you see that unto him shall the gathering of the people be so your high priest was to come out of judah real quick because you get the book of sirach 25 and uh, all right 45 and 25 real quick just pull it up 25. Yep, 45 and 25 okay 45 and 25 yep sirach 45 and 25 and then we're going to go back to Hebrews 7, and then we can move on. 
right there in the Old Testament, it tells you your high priest is going to come out of Judah. That's in Genesis. Now, this is um, Sirach. Could you read? Uh, 45. And 24, and then read 25. Okay, Sirach chapter 45, verse 24. It says, therefore, was there a covenant of peace made with him that he should be the chief of the sanctuary and of, the, of his people? Now, these are the sons of Aaron. But watch what it says. Keep going. And that he and his posterity should have the dignity of the priesthood forever. Right. right. It says, according to the covenant made with David, son of Jesse. Of the tribe of Judah, that the inheritance of the king should be to his posterity alone. So the inheritance of Aaron should also be unto his seed. Solomon, Yahawashai, who will come out of the tribe of Judah, man. That's your high priest, man. I just wanted to bring that out. <laughs> so the high priest will go to, he would, when he came on our earth through the loins of David, would be out of the tribe of Judah, which is what we're reading about right here in Hebrews 7 and 14. I start at 13. It says, for he whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, not Levi, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, <laughs> God. of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. <laughs> Come on, man. And it is yet more evident that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, man. So I not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life, man. Mm. So that's that mortal, that's that immortal uh, clothing that's being put on. When you read, what's that, uh, Second Ezra, the second chapter, it talks about how these are those that put on, took, took off the mortal clothing and yeah. put on immortal clothing, and they were being crowned by somebody that was taller than the rest. Right. That was the house shot, man. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. and we also read that in the book of Corinthians, how we're going to be changed in an instant, upgraded into those spiritual forms, that glorious forms. That's what happens when you have that true connectivity with Yahweh. But mm -hmm. only through Yahweh shot will you have access to those forms, man. Right, 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 right. He's the mediator, bro. Right. He's that high priest. Right, and that's beautiful when Yahweh shot was on the cross, when he was about to get ready to give up the ghost. In John 17, he basically... Um, he told the Lord to return to him the glory that he had with him from the beginning. Yeah, oh, right? man. You see that yeah. from the beginning. So once he pretty much once he ascended back up into the heavens after he completed his mission, conquered death. Where did he go? He went back to the right hand side of the heavenly father, man, to be back in his rightful order that he had with the heavenly father from the beginning. And what was that being priest? of the most high God, the son of the most high God, man. King and priest, man. That's how we're gonna be made kings and priests through this priesthood, okay? That's right, that's right, that's right. A higher order. Higher order, brother, that's right. right. So this is an important thing that, we're, that, that we've been ordained to establish, Akiyam. This is a huge mission. Right. Because basically, we cannot receive the power until we finish the the job. That's like right. we talking about it right now, but the the access to it, just like Yahushua, Yahushua had to finish the mission. Right. Okay. We have to finish the mission. Mm -hmm. And then all these things that we read reading about comes into power, which you go, you know, Hebrews goes into it. You know, the book of Hebrews goes into it. And the book of Hebrews destroys Christians. That's right. They can't answer the questions that these scriptures pose to their doctrine. Okay. That's right. That's right. Did right. you want Hebrews the ninth chapter or did you want to get that in? Just a little bit more and then skip to Hebrews 9. Okay. All right. He Hebrews chapter 7. Okay. In 16, well, I start at 15, and it is yet far more evident that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, 
but after the power of an endless life. Mm -hmm. That's how the laws go get inside of you. That's right. It'll take away the stony heart. It says, for he testified, thou art a priest forever after the order of Malak Tazadat. Mm -hmm. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Yeah. Right? That's so. Mm -hmm. But the law made nothing perfect. You got people, the law, the law, the law. Now, the law is a beautiful thing, don't get me wrong. But when you boast in that, you're actually boasting in something us nor our forefathers could 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 adhere to. We they we broke it. So Yahweh is the man, brother. <laughs> oh now. It says, um, for the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. That second covenant, man. Yeah. By the which yeah. we Oh, nigh unto God. That's how we get back to Yahweh through this through this better hope. Mm -hmm. All right. That's right. That's right. It says, um, and in as much, and that's this grace period, that's what this grace period is for, so that we can be ushered into that new covenant, man. And as much as not without an oath, he was made priest. Okay? For those priests were made without an oath, speaking of the Levitical priests, the, the sons of Aaron were made without an oath, but this with an oath. By that he said unto him, the Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Malak Tazadak. So they keep referencing this uh, uh -huh. Psalms, you know, they keep referencing this order that was prophesied. Mm -hmm. All right, so we can read verse 22 and then we can skip over. All right, and then whatever you wanted after that, I was just mentioning Hebrews 9 because I was just reading it. It was beautiful. It says, by so much was Yahweh made of a surely of a better testament, showing you that it's Melchizedek, bro. Yeah. And, they were, and they truly were many priests because, you know, and did you want me to keep going? Or? No, that's a point on that. That's yeah. a point on that. I wanted to go over because you can see I already had it uh, <laughs> pulled up. Yeah. Because this is basically continuing to explain everything right. that we're talking about. But right. at the end of this, you see that, okay, there's a still a job that we need to do. Yes, Yahweh Shai is, uh, you know, ushered in this uh, better covenant. Do we have access to that? How do we have access to that? What does that mean? You know, and I hope uh, this is making sense to you, Akiyam. Um, Let me know. But we want to progress through this in the book of Hebrews okay. and on a few other scriptures. Right. Okay. So this is Hebrews chapter 9. And one, then verily the first covenant also had had also ordinance of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. Right. That was the tabernacle built by Moses. That's right. For there was a tabernacle made the first where wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread. Mm -hmm. Remember Melchizedek brought uh, bread and wine. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to Abraham, <laughs> it's the high priest. It says, which is called the sanctuary. Okay, after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. Boom, the second veil. You see that? Mm -hmm. So that first veil was rent. That first order was rent. Okay. Right. Now a new order under underneath Melchizedek. Is set to be established on the earth, mm -hmm. all through the spirit. That's right. Okay. Yep. You can keep reading. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, the holy of holies. Okay, which only the sons of Aaron can go in there. Yep. You see, but now, like we when we started it off in Matthew, the 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 it rent in the temple. Okay, that veil rent in the temple, which opened up for all 12 tribes to be priests, okay? It says, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein there was, uh, wherein was go uh, the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded mm -hmm. and the tables of the covenant. Mm. Yep, and remember also that was the, the, the mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant, you know, and everything else was there, man, where the Lord would commune with those priests. 
So how is he communing with us today? It says, and over it, the cherubims of the glory shadowing the mercy seat, okay? Because it was two cherubims, and in the middle was the mercy seat. Now remember, Yahweh rose from the dead. There was two angels on the side of him. There was angel, one angel on this side, the other on the other side, showing you that that's the man right there. It says, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Mm. Basically, the rights to that has been what? Because of that divorce. Right. You know? Mm. But we will, man. We know in part and we prophesy in part, but, when, but once things are completed through Yahweh Shah, all those things are going to come to the forefront. Okay? Right, brother. That's heavy. We see we look through a glass darkly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? It says... Now when, these, now, when these things were uh, thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. And that was, you, you Israelites, that was your way back to the Father. That's what you have to understand. Your way back to the Father was through these priests mm -hmm. <laughs> who would offer up those sacrifices for you. It says... But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, when he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. All right. We understand that. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Boom. So basically it says it's telling you. The, that full relationship wasn't there yet. It was prophesied to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says, which was a figure for the present time. I mean, it says, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Mm hmm because those sacrifices, that, that priest was not perfect, okay? Those high priests weren't perfect, okay? Even after the sacrifices, the, the high priest and us still went off. But this sacrifice right here, once we enter into that second covenant, never again. It says, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances, imposed on them unto them until the time of reformation mm. and i also want to say this real quick you you know john the uh, baptist was a direct descendant of the high priest aaron so him coming and doing what he did baptizing yahweh what he said i wash you with water but he that mm. coming to baptize you with the holy he basically was transferring the priesthood over to yahweh yeah we need to we need to pull that you see what i'm saying John yeah. the Revelator, I mean, not John the Revelator, Salaki. John the Baptist was a priest of the direct lineage of uh, of, of Aaron, okay? Mm. I forget who it was through, maybe Cothan, I forget the name. But ultimately, John the Baptist coming onto the scene, okay, being of that lineage, what did he do? He baptized Yahweh, but he told the people, "Look, there's a, a higher priest. There's a there's a there's, there's a higher order. That's who you're gonna uh, uh, listen to." And it was Yahweh, man. What did you want to get? Uh, is it um? I baptized with water. Hold up. Mm -hmm. This is uh Matthew three and eleven. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Real quick. Matthew, check this out, man. That's a John, John could have came onto the scene and been proud as hell, bro, like those high priests. Bro, he had a following. He had people listening to him. Yeah. He could have been like, I'm the direct. I'm Aaron's. I'm the direct, you know? Mm hmm This is uh, Matthew. You got it? Matthew 3 and 11. It says, I indeed baptize you with water, which represented what we just read. That yep. first covenant was ultimately the priest had to wash themselves with water. Okay, it was, it was through animal sacrifice. You see that? I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, <laughs> but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Just like uh, 
uh, Yahweh Shai made reference to Abraham before right. Abraham I, I am. Going back to that holy order that was always there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. And John is Abraham. Just want to throw that out there. Mm -hmm. It says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, man. He's going to put that righteous way in your inward parts, man. Okay. But before that, he will send down the Holy Spirit directly from the heavens into your mind so that you can come back in these latter days, man. Wow. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, this is my brother. When you read down, John baptized him, but you got it. Well, it's just like you said, I was just going to, um, you know, one of the brothers said, so he passed the baton, so to speak. There you go. Boom. That's what he did. And John wasn't in the truth, right? Yeah, man. John the Baptist wasn't in the truth. His lot was heavy, bro. He knew that the was his purpose. That was John's purpose was to come onto the earth through that lineage. Because remember, his father was uh, in charge of burning the incense in the temple. That was the job of the sons of Aaron. So Jake was still, you know, templed up. But ultimately, John came and passed that baton, man. That's right. You know, being a direct descendant of Aaron, he could have boasted and said, look, man, I'm the man. But he humbled himself because he knew that there was a higher order to come, man. And he broke it down, you know. That's right. Go back to Hebrews. Now, I just wanted to throw, put that out there, you know, because. A beautiful, beautiful point. Yes. Right. I'm glad you touched in on it. Yep. So Hebrews, Hebrews 9, where we at? I think 11. Yeah, 9 and 11. Right. Hebrews 9 and 11. But Hamashiach, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, which is in the heavens. That's right. Not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. That's right. And first, we, we represent that tabernacle through the spirit, the establishing mm -hmm. of it through the word. Mm -hmm. Right. We're laying the foundations with Yahweh and building thereupon. Right. right. Okay. And calling for that holy tabernacle to come from the heavens. That's why it talks about Jerusalem coming down. Yep, the elect. Yes. That's right, brother. That's so right. The tabernacle of God is with men. That's right. That's what it says right there in Revelation. Revelation 21, yep. It says, and not of this building. See, they were boasting in the building. They were boasting in the temple. They were boasting in the Levitical priesthood. They were boasting. But, bro, that ain't how we going to become the right. That's why the Lord had the Romans take it, take it down. Now what? It says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Right. So because what? Life is in the blood. And right. through, through the Yahweh Shah's perfection, the, the, the law of sacrifice wasn't done away with. It was perfected and completed mm -hmm. through Yahweh Shah's sacrifice. Right. He fulfilled all of the priesthood, man. He was the, he was bound in the morning mm -hmm. okay, and he was sacrificed in the evening. He was the morning and the evening sacrifice. He literally fulfilled the duties of the priesthood, the sacrifice. He was the scapegoat. He was everything. You can find you read them laws, man. There's particular little things you read about Yahweh Shai and what he did and how he died that fulfill everything that the priests were doing. All right, in the first covenant, man. That's right. You know? That's right. You it know. says, uh, let's see, where are we at? Verse 14. Uh, no, wait. First, verse 14, it says, How much more? I'll start at 13 again. For if the blood of bulls and of goats, those sacrifices, and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more? Show the blood of a Mashiach who through the eternal spirit Come offered on. himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Come on, how much more? How much more will you be purged and cleansed underneath the sacrifice of Yahweh to mm -hmm. be brought before the Heavenly Father, man, to be redeemed and receive the blessing and That's receive right. the promise? Okay? That's right. Well, here's the heaviest point. Here it comes. 
and for this cause, he is the mediator of a new testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Boom. So he's the mediator of a new testament. Man. And that actually redeemed all the wickedness, that divorce that was put out there by uh, Yahweh, everything, man, that happened underneath the Levitical priesthood is being cleansed through his death, through That's his right. sacrifice. That's right, brother. Okay? That's Let's right. Read. Let me read that again. And for mm -hmm. this cause, he is the mediator of a new testament that by the means of death for the redemptions of the transgressions that were under the first testament, showing you was talking about for Israel only, that, all right, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Yeah. I mean, that's a cut. This is like you said, it's clear that first testament was dealing with the relationship of the nation of Israel with the most high. Mm -hmm. it, it, it didn't change. Okay. Yep. Want me to keep going? Yes, sir. Testament for where a testament is, there must be also necessity. All right, of the all right, let me read that again. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of that of the tester. Mm -hmm. Testator, yep, you testify. Should you know you testify something basically, you know, the people after your ass, man, mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to die. I said, for what a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the tester. For a testament is of force after men. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the tester liveth. Mm -hmm. And we see that in, in, in everyday life. Like nobody cared about Nipsey Hussle until he died. His testimony was uh, looked into and understood after he passed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I knew he wanted to open a million stores. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I don't care about it why he was alive, so called, you know, whatever. But yeah, exactly. It says, whereupon neither the first testament was uh, dedicated without blood. It hmm. says, uh, for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats and with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and he sprinkled the book to all. I mean, he sprinkled, he sprinkled both the book and all the people saying, this is the blood of the testament, which God have enjoined unto you. Boom. And you mentioned this earlier. That's wow. in the book of uh, Exodus 24. Mm hmm. You know. Let me see. Do you want to get that? No, we don't have to get that. Let's just keep reading. Yeah, it says, um, and it was that was those were Israelites. He sprinkled the blood blood on them, and they said, We 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 agree to do all the things you command us. Mm -hmm. So then you entered into a marriage. Now you're held accountable, <laughs> you know, for those laws. It says, and almost all things are by law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood. There's no remission. Without shedding of blood, because there's life in the blood. Life in the blood. There's no remission. And so when Yahweh Shai died, it's just like the brother um Jim S. Vegas sit down and said, he said, his death confirmed or verified the covenant. That's right. That's why the temple was rent from top to bottom. That's right, brother. Okay. It was a verification there. Okay, this is done. Mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Verse 23. It was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens should be purified with these. Mm. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these, man. Boom. Because there's a temple in the heavens, man. That's right. Tabernacle in the heavens. When you read Reve uh, Revelation 6, it tells you the souls of the elect are under the altar. There's an altar in the heavens. So this thing is heavy, man. Yeah. I want to get something. Temple, who's the high priest? <laughs> okay. You want to get something? Real quick. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 5, verse uh, 8, it says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, 
which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to the most high by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And then we just read that he was worthy to take the book, that high priest. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Verse, where is it at? Okay, boom, verse 19. Hebrews 9 and 19, it says, For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. All right? Yeah. So now we're seeing a higher order being established. Right. And it's saying, were they allowed to take the book? Because, you know, it says... uh. Verse 9, Revelation 5 and 9, and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to the most high by thy blood. There's a sprinkling of the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, mm -hmm. and has made us unto our power kings and priests, right? Malak mm -hmm. We shall reign on the earth. Right. That's right. And it starts here. It's starting here, man, with. The fact, because when you read up, ultimately Yahweh Shai opened the seals and sent down the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, because the the, the it was sealed. It was sealed. But when he when he died on the cross and his spread his blood, that enabled him to go back up to be able to be the one to open the seals and send down the understanding and commune with us. So we're doing the same thing that those priests of Aaron did. That's we're right. communing with the heavenly father through the mercy seat, which is Yahweh Shai, and we're going out there and telling the children of Israel what they need to do, and they don't want to listen. Nope. That's all right, the elect is listening, man. That's right. So the priesthood is very important, man. Whenever Israel got in trouble, they would have to be raised up a king, a priest, you know, a judge to get them back in their right mind. Right now, this is what's happening, man, but it's all starting from in the heavens on the right hand side of the heavenly father through Yahweh shot, man. He's opened the books, man. He's opened the seal. Go ahead. All right. And so I want to skip over to uh verse 10. Man, bro, it's just so much, bro. So much. Like, man. You mind starting at verse 8? Mm-hmm. This is Hebrews 10 and 8. I mean, I start at seven. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither thou hadst thou pleasure in them which are offered by the law. Mm -hmm. So, no. you know, there's all the scriptures where I will not hear, I won't, I won't smell your sweet savors anymore. I don't want to hear your prayers when y'all go into these into the temple no more. I ain't I ain't recognizing none of your, your the bullets. You can kill all the turtle doves and bullets you want. I'm tired of y'all. Y'all through. All right. So because he put his because but because he made an oath and he swore on himself a, a new better way to have that connection with the most high had to come. That's right, brother. Okay. Man. A higher order. Right. Okay. So, All right. So we want to keep reading. Yeah. It says, um, then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. I take it away the first and establish it the second covenant. Mm -hmm. It says in a, that he may have Hold up. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will. Oh God, he taketh away the first that he may establish the second. Mm -hmm. By the which will we are we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahweh Shai once for all. Now, ooh, it, this is getting gonna get good. Yep. Check check this out, man. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering. Oftentimes, the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Mm -hmm. It's just a sign. It says, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. 
See that? Mm -hmm. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Going back to Psalms 110. Going back to Psalms 110. <laughs> See? <laughs> oh, wow. For by the offering, for by one offering, he that perfected. Um, he hath perfected. He hath perfected. There's just so many scriptures going through my mind. Let me calm my black ass down. <laughs> it says, for by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Wow. If you want to uh, bring out a scripture, just call it. I'll pull it. Not right now. Go ahead. Okay. Go on. It says, uh, for by one offering, he that perfected forever, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Forever. So those that were given unto you, Shad, like you mentioned, John the 17th chapter. Also, we read about this in Revelation 14 and in and, um, and other scriptures that we read about. How Most I was, uh, had gave you, uh elect group and they will be sanctified forever. We read about that in Romans, the eighth chapter. OK, talking about, you know, those who predestinated. OK, those that were there with you, Shah in the beginning, establishing everything. Mm hmm. Yep. Okay. The disciples at the at the end of John 15. All right, you shall bear wit witness because you have been with me from the beginning. That's right. That's the Allahim basically uh in the beginning, man. What's gonna happen is the order of the heavens is gonna take place on the earth. The judges uh that, that created every under Yahweh and the heavens are gonna rule, all right, and, and do everything on earth, man. Which is going to lead? That's the that, that's the best government you can ask for. Yep. You know. But it's, we must complete the mission. Yeah, we got to first complete, complete the mission. It's like yeah, how it is. Always talk about us, um, um, basically mortifying our members, killing ourselves within this world, not looking for a, a legacy in this world. Preaching and confessing for the legacy to come. Okay. Right. Very true, man. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10 and 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them. Wait, wait a minute. Yep, verse 16. Verse 16. Says, Wherefore of the Holy Spirit also is a witness to us. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. But after that, he hath said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Boom. Yep. And that way and that will, that's the second covenant being established. That's right. Okay. Yep. Because that's essentially the level that Yahweh Shah uh was at after after really on the earth and even intensified once he uh once he completed his mission, he went back into his glorious form. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. It says, um, and their sins and iniquities all I remember no more. Now yep. where it says, uh, now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Because we have the question that the question came up: Could we still offer up sacrifices? Well, that's that's not going to get you forgiveness of sins. Now there was a ceremonial sacrifice, like at the Passover, we would do a ceremonial. There there's ceremonial sacrifices, and then there was the sacrifices for offering of sins. If you want to offer up a lamb. That's on you, but it's to teach Israel point. to do that for remission of sins, you're going off. What you was gonna say, brother? Well, if you offering a, if you sacrificing the lamb and you saying that that's you know you still underneath the Levitical priesthood, you don't understand what, what what's going on. Right, right. And Paul offered up a, a sacrifice because it said to the Jews, I became a Jew. To the to this, I became that. You know, because he he came from that area of life. But Paul understood very well, and he's teaching that the the sacrifice that leads to remission of sins is through Yahweh Shai, man. That's right. Okay. But it says, uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 10 and 18. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Yahweh Shai. Mm. By a new and living way, which he have consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. Boom. So now 
that veil, which is to say his flesh, is our access into the holies of holies, mm -hmm. right? Through the sacrifice that he made. Mm -hmm. Putting off death, conquering death is what we're trying to come into. But it's going to take us what? Following the uh, following what we're supposed to be doing. And then when Yahweh Shah returns, it says, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will in, in, in their minds while I write them. Right. Because sin will not have dominion over us anymore. That's right. We're overcoming death, starting with this word entering to us in this terrible flesh, this corrupted flesh. Because the Heavenly Father is sending down blessings through Yahweh Shai to enter into our minds so that we can do what, as a matter of fact, we'll get that in Ephesians and then, you know, whatever else. But well, go ahead. Want me to keep going? Yes, because basically we're putting off the mortal and putting on the immortal. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. And that represents that old temple. That's right, brother. That that represented the mortal. Okay. Yep. It um, says, Ooh. and by a new and living way which he have consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. In having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with the true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. <laughs> the washing of your spirit. That's right. That's the true baptism. It says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Boom. Boom. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. That's right. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, because the brotherhood, man, that's the direct dwelling of the Heavenly Father. When he said he's going to make us his temple, what did the temple represent? The direct dwelling place of the Most High. That's why the Lord said to Moses, build a tabernacle. That's why uh, uh, Solomon built a temple so the, the the heavenly father's presence can dwell directly there but now that those things are done away with this high priest is building us up to be the temple the dwelling of the most high that's where it says i shall be their god and they shall be my people man because he's going to dwell in us man yeah <laughs> man my son keep coming bothering me asking me for something and i'm looking at him like why why you keep coming right yeah, he, here he'll stop and this is what he wanted. He wanted that bread. I look back. I was like, what is he talking about? Look, there's a big old piece of bread sitting in here. I didn't even notice this bread. I didn't even know they made them big ass pieces of bread. <laughs> <laughs> bread. <laughs> bread that your mama used to make with them spaghettis back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what do you hey, want? gave the bread, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I would try as the bread. So hey, that hey, that that was symbolic. The Lord wrote that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you know? I was like, this boy crazy. I was like, oh man, he wants that bread. <laughs> hey, hey, that's the spirit, man. That's the spirit, man. That's the spirit. Okay, so that's all I wanted there in Hebrews. And then there was a scripture I wanted to get. Um, and I know you want to get Ephesians too. Yeah, we'll get that. We can, you know, we can pretty much end off on that one. Okay, cool. Um Man, that's it. What you're getting is it. That's I can it. Just zoom in on it. Can you see that? Yep. All right. This is uh, where you want me, want me to start at one or? No. no, let's let's start at five. Okay. Hebrews, I mean, not Hebrews. First Peter is two and five. Ye also as lively stones are built up on a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. And brothers, you know, the people that have that question about sacrifices and offerings, you got to get into this. Yeah. When you read this in 1 Peter 2 and 5, that is, that's what you're doing. Okay? When you're going out there, when we're committing ourselves to this ministry, to basically you're putting your life on the line. And I don't think Sometimes I don't think people really understand the severity of what they are part of. You've you've set yourself to be a willing martyr, a willing witness. Witness, right? Okay. 
That's why John the Baptist was in the wilderness. He wasn't in the wilderness just because he was playing games. He was in the wilderness because they weren't teaching what he was teaching. The spirit was dealing with him. Right. He was teaching about Yahweh Shai, bro. That's right. Okay. That's why Yahweh Shai had to dip out <laughs> when he said, before Abraham, I am. Okay. So now we're going out there. You see how they reacting to uh, what's his name, Deshaun Jackson? Yeah. And all these other uh, celebrities and people that's coming out and speaking on being a nation of Israel, they immediately are ostracized and vilified. Mm -hmm. They don't want this order. Mm -hmm. That's right. You got to understand there's a priest on the left hand side, too, and they're trying to establish their things through Satan. Yep. You know. OK. All right. So let's keep reading. First Peter's two and five, ye also as lively stones are built up on a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Wherefore, also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Sion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Come on. All right. Unto you. Unto you, therefore, so it said we are, uh, did it say holy priesthood? Yes. Yeah, so see that? Mm -hmm. we're, a, we're a spirit, we're a holy priesthood, man. That's right. All spiritual sacrifices, man. Okay. But it says, um, unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and stone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense unto them that stumble at the word being disobedient whereunto also they were appointed it was appointed not to get this it was appointed uh to basically prove those who were righteous prove mm -hmm. those who really had faith mm -hmm. by what coming up against them doing all these things trying to disallow mm -hmm. what they built right they deny Yahawashai when he's literally written all throughout the Torah, the Old Testament, the law, the prophets. He's there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lock their minds from get, gaining access to that. That's why they don't go nowhere else. They sit there and talk about us for, for damn near 13 years. They've been talking about us. They ain't really went into no prophecies. They ain't got nothing to talk about those who deny Yahawashai. <laughs> all they talk about is us. All right. It says, um, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. The king and the priest, a royal priesthood. Right. right. Melchizedek. Right. Right. Okay. A peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Boom. So it says here, but ye are a chosen generation. See, but a Christian will try to go to the book of Timothy and talk about in endless gene genealogies. Well, it's talking about a chosen generation. You see, that's why you got to have the understanding of the scripture. This is directly being pulled from Deuteronomy, man. Right. Okay. Now, we didn't even hear Hebrews 8, which will break it down all the way. They have the disdain for Hebrews, the eighth chapter. Weird. Yeah, it's like, you know, when we read it, it's like we didn't read it, right? Yeah. It's like... like it, it's like they don't they act like you never said that like that don't that ain't there That's <laughs> crazy right <laughs> yep moving on you know which okay. times past were not a people because the gentiles mm -hmm. we, we were basically in an uncircumcised state and that's where abraham is beautiful because at that time he was pretty much not a people he was detached from that legacy okay but the lord had favor on him man and he was blessed. So, which in times past were not a people, but now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, mm -hmm. okay, but now have obtained mercy. Why well, you go to the low I me, not a people. When well, you read about it in the book of Hosea, right. chapter one, verse nine on down, it talks about how you're going to have low I me. Right. La I me. We were divorced. That's right. right. But then it, during times, you know, we were going to be those people. Right. But that order had to be and that way had to be established. And that was only through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You know? Right, right. And now we are the people. Now we're being called the people of God again in these latter days through the spirit, man. That's right. 
we were not a people, but the Lord entered into us. Because if you remember when you when Yahweh Shai ascended back on high um, in the book of Acts, he was able to send down the Holy Spirit into those Gentiles. See that? He was able to send the Holy Spirit down and those Gentiles started to come into the fold, man. Well, that's us. That's why in the book of uh, uh, Acts, John or Peter, one of them says, they understood that, whoa, this is the building of the tabernacle of David, these Gentiles coming in. Although that will be fulfilled through us in this time, the Gentiles, which were not a people, they, that's the tabernacle of David, receiving the mercies of David, man. What do you want me to read? Uh, Isaiah 61 and two. Isaiah 61 and two. To appoint unto them, I mean, uh, it says, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh and the day of vengeance to our God to comfort all that mourn. Yep. We're going to be doing this before World War III, before the fire comes. We're going to be proclaiming the acceptable year of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, mm -hmm. to give to, uh, unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for uh, mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh, that he might be glorified. See that? We're going to be those trees. We're going to be there, those, that, that standing legacy in the land. All right? Let's keep going. It says, um, and strangers, oh, wait, hold up. Verse four, it says, and they shall... <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, <I> was like, <laughs> <laughs> if they shall build the old waste, the tabernacle of David, they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Uh -huh. the tabernacle of David and the strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and, and your vine dressers. Put their ass in captivity. That's but right. Shall be named priest of Yahweh. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Man, it means you're gonna be ruling over them. You're gonna be a king and a priest. Malak right. the order of Melchizedek, is going to be established in the day of the vengeance of the Lord, and that's directly connected with the Lord coming back and taking down the kings of the earth. Because you can't have two people sitting on the throne. So no. the king of the earth is going to be taken down. And the promise, the nation of Israel, is going to be established with through through Yahweh with Yahweh right. on earth. And that holy order, that higher order, is going to be put inside of the nation of Israel, man. That's right. That's right. So I just want to read that, man. You know, we can get Ephesians and, and, and wrap it up unless you had another point that you want to make. Ephesians 4. No, I'll do, I'll do a lesson. Follow okay. up. I'll just do, you know. Kind, kind, kind. Well, Ephesians 4. And, Ephesians. Uh, yeah. 4. Mm, yeah, start at. Start at, uh, you can start at 7, I guess. Right. It's Ephesians chapter four, verse seven. It says, but until every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Hamashiach. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. And, gave and, and you know, those gifts, man, are, are ultimately what we bring to the body. But the gift comes from on high, man. Yep. The gifts of the spirit. Yep. The scriptures say uh, a man's gift make it room for him and bring it him before great men in the book of Proverbs, the 17th chapter. So your gift, man, you, you have to bring it to the altar, so to speak. But where does that gift come from? Because the Lord could have kept us stranded. If it was according to that Levitical priesthood, we wouldn't have no gift. We'd be filthy. Go ahead. Right. It says, wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Right, because we're in this terrible flesh we're un we're in an uncircumcised state okay but when he ascended up on high as it, it speaks about in revelation the fifth chapter he sent down the comforter which is the holy spirit man so that we can get understanding and preach this word man 
So he led captivity captive, man. We're overcoming death, brothers. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai. This is prison, man. This is a prison. Flesh is the first prison, and then the earth is another prison under Esau, double straits. You see? Mm -hmm. But but through the spirit now, we're overcoming this shit, man. Go ahead. Now that now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Because he had to go through that, he had to become that sacrifice. In order to be glorified back to the Father, he had to be obedient, just as we have to be obedient. Okay? When he when he, he came down, just as we are in the flesh catching hell, Yahweh was in the flesh catching hell, man. Go ahead. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that mm -hmm. he might feel all things. Right, and he went back to the right-hand side of the Father, letting that these are the gifts. Let's, let's read what the gifts are, go ahead. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers mm. for the perfecting of the saints. Right. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Hamashiach. Right. So we're able to now commune back with our power. He's he's opened himself back into his woman. You see, we're doing the duties of the priest, as we just read in the book of Peter. You are a holy priesthood. Yep. You see yep. that? So, so what we, we read earlier in the book of Leviticus, the 25th chapter, the priest would actually commune. You know, people's all in all of this technology, man. The priest. You know, the Urim and Thurim and all of that, man, that was heavy, man. Yeah, they, come on. Communed, they communed, okay, with the Heavenly Father through the mercy seat to go and tell Israel what they needed to do in order to be in good graces with him. So now that office is open up to the elect in these latter days, which the 144,000 are priests. Those are the priests after the order of Melchizedek, man. So Lord yeah. was a part of that number, man. That's right. And so when we read about faith without works is dead, be considerate of what, you, what was meant by the word works. The work of the ministry is the highest order of things. It's, it's above the order of the rituals of the law. The Most High is looking for a relationship and a obedience and understanding. And mm -hmm. that's how you deal with each other, how you deal with, you know, uh, the, uh, the brethren, the breaking down of the prophecies and, and going out there and confessing the word and teaching and Everything, that's the work of the ministry. Right. And we all have a different gift to bring that forward. Okay. Right, brother, through the high priest. You that's know, right. Through the high priest, man, so. Okay. So is there any more you want on that? You want to keep reading or? No, nah, I'm, I'm done, you know, pretty much, you know, unless you got anything else. No, no, no. I think that's it. You know, um, you know, we wanted to just kind of touch in on that. Lord willing, it was edifying for all you Akiam and, and even the sisters on here, man, to understand, like, there's a higher order being established and we're coming to and it's a very serious thing. It's important for all of us to take personal responsibility. And if you truly care about the kingdom coming, you understand that, you know, work within the gift that's being given to you. Mm -hmm. to ministry and to, hey, man, call on your house to come back. So. Right. It's like, man, under that first covenant, you know, we had those high priests with a, you know, with an earthly tabernacle. But now our high priest is directly in the heavens, right next to the most high, making intercession for you, man. That's right. See? And he's going to bring perfection, man. Through this priesthood right here, those laws won't need to be written on stone. Mm -hmm. We won't need fringes in that day. The fringes were to remember the laws. Because Jake was going off. We won't need those, those things in that day, man. Yeah. Right now, we're at the forefront of it going into that order. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, that's just highlighting how it's a that's a ritual. You know, the Most High is looking for relationship. Uh, and, and that's why it says in Deuteronomy 30, I want you to come to me with all your heart and all your soul. Okay. And so whenever he puts that the laws in us, man. It's going to be good. It's gonna be a party. We go party. Then it's gonna be a party. Yeah. Then we go. Then mirth. Hey. Then at that point we gonna be good, man. There ain't gonna be no more sadness, no more tears, man. Our men, women, and children will be a hundred percent righteous, man. And that's something we all look forward to, man. Because this is hell, man. This is hell. So what Yahweh did, bro? Woo! 
it's heavy, man. So yeah. You got it, brother. Hey, man, with that, man, we want to say call hello. Yeah, how about by Hashem, you have a shot by Hashem, Kaha Kadash. Double honors once again to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Uh, much peace, love, and salutations to you. I can't, I'm out there pushing the word and sincerity and truth. And so, uh, let's just keep getting it, man. Hey, shalom. And who on this chat will get this much understanding from vocab? <laughs> vocab watching right now, taking notes. Yeah, yeah, he'll hit you with a, a freestyle that's going off. Yeah, through jellyfish in his back teeth. All right, man. Y'all watching y'all shout about Shimakakura's Brock a thumb to you brothers and sisters. Shalom. Shalom.